Hello everyone, I am Demented Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews and other deck techs. On this episode of The Brewery, I will be discussing my take on the Locust God. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It'll really help out the channel. Other ways you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. Patrons get early access to scheduled videos on YouTube and higher tier patrons get access to my Discord server as well. You can find a link to that down in the description too. In fact, patrons got a chance to see this video earlier. Alright, let's get back to the episode. The Locust God is a 4-4 God with flying for 4 generic, 1 blue and 1 red. Unlike the monocolored Amonkhet Gods, instead of being indestructible, if it dies, it returns to your hand at the beginning of your next end step. You can also pay 4 mana to loot for 1. However, the main ability that will be used for this deck is its triggered ability. Whenever you draw a card, you create a 1-1 one, one blue and red flying insect token with haste. Therefore, this is going to be a very straightforward deck tech. Draw tons of cards, create a ton of tokens, get a ton of value. The main way this deck draws into a ton of cards is with its wheel effects. The good thing about these effects is that, if they're global, they can also disrupt any of your opponent's plans. Wheel of Fortune and Reforge the Soul has players discard their hand, but then everyone draws 7. What's great about these spells is that when cast with an empty hand, you draw into a fresh one. Magus of the Wheel and Runehorn Hellkite also have the same effect, but on a creature. The great thing about the Hellkite is that you can use it from your graveyard, which is great since you're discarding so many cards all the time. Memory Jar and its Magus are similar, but the player has to discard the new hand of 7 cards instead of their original one. Obviously, you want to activate these cards during your own turn, so you can take advantage of the cards you drew. Incendiary Command and Corvath's Fury are also wheels, but these have players draw cards equal to the cards they discarded due to the spell. Tolarian Winds does the same, but it's one-sided and it's an instant. Other wheels that depend on how many cards a player had in their hand are Windfall and Jace's Archivist. However, unlike the previously mentioned wheels, these have everyone draw the same amount of cards as the greatest amount discarded by any player. The rest of the wheels don't have players discard their hand, but shuffle them instead. Molten Psyche and Winds of Change do just that. In this deck, there really isn't any difference between shuffling and discarding since what we care about is drawing into the deck as well as making insects. You can also achieve this effect with Whirlpool Rider, Whirlpool Drake, and Whirlpool Warrior. These creatures are great since the deck does have sacrifice outlets, so it's good to have bodies around, but we'll get into that later on. Other shuffle effects can be found on the memory half of Commit to Memory and Echo of Eons. Similar to Runehorn Hellkite, the wheel effect is cast from the graveyard. Echo of Eons can also be cast as normal, which makes it two wheel spells on one card potentially. Time Reversal, Time Spiral, and Game Plan do the same thing as the previously mentioned spells. What's great about these 5 spells is that they shuffle graveyards into libraries so they're great to recover anything lost throughout a game as well as disrupting graveyard strategies. You can also have the entire table draw a ton of cards with Folio of Fancies. You have to pay 2 mana for each card the table draws but it's a great mana sink. Not only that, but its second ability can be used to mill opponents. The deck doesn't aim to mill opponents, but after enough wheels, it can be quite harrowing for your opponents to keep losing cards. Blue Sun Zenith and Stroke of Genius are also great mana sinks that have you draw X cards. Blue Sun Zenith has the added bonus of getting shuffled back into your library after it resolves. You can also draw a ton of cards each turn with Arjun the Shifting Flame and Mind Moil. Thanks to these spells, every spell you cast behaves like a wheel. You'll definitely draw deep into the deck. Fortunately, the cards are sent to the bottom of the library and not discarded, so you don't have to worry about decking yourself. If that weren't enough, you can maximize how many cards you draw thanks to Alhamaret's Archive and Consecrated Sphinx. The Archive has you drawing twice as many cards as you normally would as long as it's not the first card you draw in your draw step. This basically doubles the amount of cards any wheel or draw spell gets you. The Sphinx is even crazier with a wheel. If the entire table draws 7 cards, you're drawing a whopping 49 cards. Fortunately, the Sphinx is a you may ability, so you don't have to use it if you're about to deck yourself. Unfortunately, that's not the case with the Archive. If you have the Archive in play as well as an effect like Mind Moil, you can very easily deck yourself. Clogs of Gix prevents against that by letting you sacrifice any permanent. In this case, you can sacrifice the Archive in case you're about to deck yourself. The deck also has Reliquary Tower if you don't want to discard all of those cards in your discard step. 
A colorless land isn't that detrimental to include in a two color deck. Or, if you don't want to lose the cards you're discarding, Library of Lang helps with that. Not only does it have an effect like Reliquary Tower, but when an effect makes you discard a card, you can put it on top of your library instead. So why does this deck want to draw so many cards? Well, there's insane token production right in the command zone. You can create enough tokens to take out the table. Or maybe you don't need so much. Coat of Arms really makes those insect tokens dangerous. Every token created makes them all plus one plus one, so even something as simple as a wheel will give you seven, seven, seven hasty flyers. Instead of combat damage though, you can also use Perforos God of the Forge to kill off the entire table. Every insect token you create deals two damage to all opponents, so a single wheel is enough to give 14 damage to all opponents at once. When used with effects like Mind Moil, you can kill off the entire table in a single turn. You can also win outright by decking yourself thanks to Laboratory Maniac and Jace Wielder of Mysteries. It's incredibly easy to deck yourself in this deck, so let's see how. The easiest way is with Kinder Discovery. If you choose Insect, then whenever an Insect token is created, it triggers the enchantment, which then has you draw a card. But if you draw a card with the Locust God in play, you create another Insect token. This loop is automatic and uncontrollable, so once it starts, unless it's interrupted, you will inevitably deck yourself. So as long as you have Jace or Landman in play, you win the game on the spot. Enter the Infinite is another great way to deck yourself. Granted, it costs a whopping 12 mana, but that's not that hard to pull off in this deck. We'll soon see why. You draw your entire library save for one card. This spell alone won't get you the victory, but it definitely facilitates a victory either through Laboratory Maniac or Jace Wielder of Mysteries, as well as with the Locust God and Perforos in play. Now let's see how we're going to fund these spells. Lacking green, the deck will depend mostly on mana rocks to get its mana acceleration. Since we're constantly wheeling, it's preferable that these rocks are as cheap as possible in order to cast them before losing them to the wheel effect. That's why the deck is running Mox Amber, Mox Diamond, Mox Opal, Chrome Mox, and Mana Crypt in the zero cost section of the mana curve. Not only can we cast these for free from our hands when we draw into them, but we essentially get a free wheel effect when casting these while either Arjun or Mind Moil are on the battlefield. In the one cost section, the deck has Soul Ring and Mana Vault. Also relatively easy to cast before a wheel, these can tap down for even more mana afterwards in order to get more steam to keep wheeling. Since the deck doesn't have mana dorks or land-based mana acceleration, the rest of the mana rocks take up the two cost section of the curve, Arcane Signet, Izzet Signet, and Talisman of Creativity. These rocks aren't bad, and they're still great to accelerate the deck, especially in one where the commander costs 6 mana, but a lot of the times we won't have any mana to cast these when we want to cast a wheel as well. In this case, the priority is the wheel in order to keep digging through the deck, as well as creating insect tokens. Fortunately, said tokens can also function as mana acceleration. Ashnid's Altar and Phyrexian Altar have the potential of generating a ton of mana. With these on the battlefield along with the Locust God, the insects created by wheeling can be sacrificed in order to generate the mana needed to keep wheeling and digging through the deck as well as casting expensive spells early on. You can see an example of just that in this episode of the stage in the link above. In that game, you can also see an amazing combo in action. Apart from the Locust God and an altar, you need Skull Clamp. Let's say you have two insect tokens in play. Sacrifice one to the altar to get mana. Use that mana to equip Skull Clamp to the remaining insect token. This token dies as a state-based effect and you draw two cards. However, drawing two cards replaces the two insects you just used for the combo. This might not generate infinite tokens, but you do draw into your entire deck. This facilitates a win via Perforos or Laboratory Maniac. You can also generate infinite colorless mana if you do this with Ashnet's Altar instead of Phyrexian Altar. The deck also runs plenty of two mana lands like Asian Tomb, Temple of the False God, Soldevi Excavations, Coral Atoll, Dormant Volcano, and Is It Boiler Works. Although it might seem like a loss of tempo with the latter three, they're actually better than expected in this kind of deck. Returning a land to hand gives us one more for if we want to cast Mox Diamond. Also, returning our land to our hand keeps it the same size as before we dropped that land. So with spells that take into account how many cards we have in our hand when wheeling, we'd have another card to count. Or maybe we can bypass casting spells altogether with Omniscience. This enchantment might seem overcosted at 10 mana, but if we're able to get it into play, we can cast any of our spells for free. This is great in a wheeling deck since we're constantly getting a fresh hand of cards. Alright, so all this is great and all, 
but if combo is one of the main routes to victory, we have to protect that combo. That's why the deck is running counter magic in the form of Pact of Negation, Force of Will, Swan Song, Counter Spell, Deprive, Familiar's Ruse, Mana Drain, and Negate. All 8 of these counter spells are cheap enough to cast that we can leave the mana open before comboing off in order to secure the win. Deprive and Familiar's Ruse are included for the same reason as the Bounce Lands, in order to keep our hand size the same after casting them. Again, running counter magic is key in this deck since a well-timed removal effect can really throw a wrench into our victory. However, we can also disrupt opponents besides counter magic. If we're constantly wheeling hands away, bouncing things is an excellent way to get rid of things. This is why the deck is running Sunder, Rebuild, and Cyclonic Rift. Rebuild can really set back players using artifact-based ramp, but it doesn't hurt us as much since it's easy for us to recast our mana rocks afterwards. Sunder is possibly the evilest one of the three even more so than Cyclonic Rift. With enough mana rocks or with any of the altars in play, we don't really need our lands. Casting Sunder before a wheel is essentially mass land destruction. Fear not though, recall that the deck also runs the wheels that shuffle graveyards back into libraries so those lands aren't really gone. Cyclonic Rift is a must since it'll bounce back everything that isn't a land that we don't control. Doing this before casting something like Windfall will have us draw into a huge amount of cards. Notwithstanding, it's also a way to truly reset the board state if overloaded before casting a wheel. So overloading Cyclonic Rift at the end of the turn before hours when we're planning on casting a wheel during our main phase is salt inducing indeed. These disruptions and wheels might seem to harm us as well, especially if we have Arjun and Mayan Moil in play. However, the deck is running Leyline of Anticipation and Vidalkin Orrery. In response to a wheel effect entering the stack, we can take advantage that our spells now have flash and we can cast them before the wheel resolves. That way, we can cast anything we can that we don't want to wheel away when it's going to resolve. These cards are amazing in a deck like this for that very reason. We can also cast wheels outside of our turn to disrupt opponents even further as well. That means that we can use these effects both defensively as well as offensively. The rest of the deck is just lands. The deck's running all 5 fetch lands, command tower, sulfur falls, steam vents, and volcanic island as well as 10 basic islands and 10 basic mountains. This brew is just an idea of how to build around the locust god. This deck seeks to synergize as much as possible with its pieces in order to ultimately win via combo or combat with all the insects being created. It might seem dependent on its commander, but fortunately, it returns to our hand at the end of the turn in which it dies, so we don't have to worry too much about protecting it since it can also bypass commander tax when returning to our hand. As is, this deck is a lot of fun to pilot and play. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mind, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the Brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of the Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am Demented Kirby and happy brewing.